our grid below grade 11s. It is still Mr. Shajoy here. We are still looking at our June paper, which was from the KZN province from the year 2024, right? Now, so here we are looking at our Euclidean geometry, right? We are just trying to understand that these are your level one and your level two questions, right? They just require you to have just remembering and just a little bit of understanding of the concept, right? Now, let's start here. Now, your 6.1, they are saying in the diagram below, you are having CD, which is a diameter, right? Now, it is important for you to note what a diameter is, right? So, I, I just want you, when you hear this word diameter, right? So, which means now you already know in terms of what is it then that uh, comes into your mind, right? So, you know that you have a circle that is going to be cut into two equal halves, right? And there is only one theorem that relates to your diameter, whereby you are saying, uh, you what? Your diameter subtend a 90 degree angle, right? Are we fine? And then now we are also saying here you're having PC, which is a tangent, right? And from tangent, we have three related uh, theorems that relate with tangent. We are having tan chord theorem. We are having tan perpendicular to the radius. We are also having tan from the same point, right? Time from the same point altogether. So these are three theorems that must come to your mind as soon as you hear the word tangent, right? Now they are saying cot DK is produced to P. Now they say PT intersect KC at Q uh, and also your C DP is equal to 40 degrees, your DPT is equal to 25 degrees and your TQC is equal to 65 degrees, right? Now, what is the first thing that they are requiring us to do here? They want us to calculate with the reason what is going to be your C2. Now, if I'm seated here, my angle C2 here, it's going to be this particular angle here, right? Now, and from here, I can already see that this particular line here that I'm having here, this is my tangent, right? So, and this particular line here, this is my tan, right? So, I can already see that this particular angle is found in between tan and chord, right? So, which means now I can simply say that this is going to be same as this one, right? So, my angle C2 is going to be same as 40 degrees. And what is going to be the reason there? This is going to be tan chord theorem, right? So, which means my angle C2 here, my angle C2 here is going to be same as what? This is going to be same as 40 degrees. Why am I saying that, right? Because of this here, you're having tan chord theorem. Are we, are we together, right? So this here, it's going to be same as 40 degrees. Are we fine, right? So that's what you are going to have as 40 degrees. And then now your 6.1.2. Now we are looking for angle K1, right? So what is it then that you're going to have for your angle K1 here? Right. So now I want you to see that this particular angle K1, it is subtended by DC. Right. Can you see that K1, it is subtended by DC. Right. Now, and they said now DC or CD is a diameter, which means now this particular angle here, it's going to be a right angled. Uh, right. It's going to be a right angle, which means your angle K1 is going to be actually 90 degrees. Right. Why are we saying that? Because this is an angle in a semicircle, right? This is an angle in a semicircle, right? Remember now, uh, when you're having an angle in a semicircle, now this particular angle is going to give you what? This is going to give you 90 degrees. Are we all together, right? So basically now your angle K1 here, it's going to be same as what? This is going to be same as your 90 degrees. Now, uh, if now I am uh, looking at my, uh, my angle P1. What is going to be my angle P1, right? So my angle P1 here, right? So this is going to be your angle P1. What is it then that I'm going to have here as my angle P1, right? Now, I, wa I want us to, uh, you know, to have a look here, right? Now, when we are saying what is going to be your angle P1, let's see in terms of what is it then that you're going to do now from here. So uh, now to understand your angle P1, I want you to look at this, right? So if you can look at this particular triangle here, right? If you can look at this particular triangle in here, I'll just try and ensure that I mark it here, right? Can you see this is a triangle, right? So this is a triangle. 
And what is going to be your angle Q uh, here? I, I want you to see that this angle here, it is an exterior angle of a triangle. Can you see that, right? Can you see that this is an exterior angle of a triangle, right? Which means now your 65 degrees is going to be same as what? It's going to be same as your P1 plus your C2. All to get, right? So which means now we are saying P1, right? Angle P1 plus your angle C2 is going to be same as what? It's going to be same as 65 degrees. What is going to be the reason here? This is going to be because of this is an exterior angle of a triangle, right? Can you see this is an exterior angle of this particular triangle? Which triangle are we referring to here? This is triangle Q, P, C, right? Can you see this is triangle QPC, right? Because, but now we are looking for angle P1. Can you see that? You are going to say your angle P1 is going to be same as 65 degrees. Now, what was our angle C2? We've already recently calculated our angle C2 as what? As 40 degrees, right? How to get, right? So, which means this is going to be 65. And this is going to be same as 65 subtract 40, which is going to be same as 25 degrees here, right? So, which means this particular angle here, it's going to be same as 25 degrees. And we all find, right? So, which means whatever that you are finding here, this is going to be same as 25. And now, what else then now are you going to do now from here? They want us to prove that your TC, right? So, they want us to prove that TC is equal to your QC, right? So, they want us to prove that this TC uh, is equal to your QC. Which one is going to be your QC here? Now, uh, where is your Q, where is, right? So they want us to prove that these two are going to be equal. Maybe let me just make up my space here, right? So that we can see all these particular things that they are referring to us, right? So they want us to prove that this particular side here is going to be same as this particular side. Now, and there's only one way to actually prove that, right? What is it that we can actually use to prove that? Now we can say, now, uh, to prove that your TC is equal to that, now we are going to use what we are going to use. Uh, firstly, now, what I can uh, prove from here, if I can prove that now, they say TC is equal to QC. If I can prove that my angle T1 is going to be equal to my 65 degrees, then I will automatically have proven that this is going to be what? This is going to be uh, equal, right? Now, what is the first thing that I can do now from here? Oh, it's okay. Now, can I see that? Now, if uh, you can allow to do this, right? Can you see that my angle C1 plus my angle C2, these are going to be equal to 90 degrees, right? Why am I saying that? This is because uh, tan perpendicular to radius. Isn't it so, right? Can you see that? Because remember here, uh, this radius here, right? Remember, this is a diameter, right? And this is a tangent. Oh, it's okay. Right, so when they meet here, right, when a radius and a tangent meet, right, what is it that they do now from here? They form a ninety degrees, right? So they form a ninety degrees. So what does this mean? Which means now from here, I can simply say that my my angle C one, my angle C one is going to be same as what now from here. Can we not see that my angle C1 is going to be same as 90 degrees? Subtract, what was our angle C2? We've already found out that our angle C2 is same as what? It was same as 40 degrees, if I'm not mistaken, right? I want to get, right? So this is 40 degrees, right? So which means now, can you see that my angle C1 is going to be same as what? My angle C1 is going to be same as 50 degrees, right? Now, what is it then that I can do now from here? Can you see that I can say my angle T1 plus my angle C1 and my angle Q, I am going to find this, right, to be equals to 180 degrees. So if I can say in triangle, what? This is triangle T. QC, all right, this is triangle TQC, then I can say, look, my T1 plus 65 degrees plus my 50 degrees, this is going to give me 180 degrees, Why? Right? These are sum of what? Sum of angles in a what? In a triangle. And then now, what is it that I can do now from here? Can I say my T1 is going to be same as 180 degrees? Uh, subtract 65 degrees plus what? Plus 50 degrees. And what is it that I'm going to get here? Actually, when I'm subtracting these two, what is it that I'm getting here? 
I am getting that my ALT1 is going to be same as what? It's going to be same as 65 degrees. Right? So which means this particular angle here is also 65 degrees. Right? And now what does that mean? Right? So if T1 and that angle TQC is equal to 65 degrees, therefore TC is equal to QC. Right? So I am saying now from here, if what? Uh, if T1 is equal to your T Q T Q C, which are both equals to 65 degrees, right? Now it's okay. Now, therefore, I can also now prove that now, therefore, my T C, right? Remember here, I can prove that my T C now is equal to what my T C is going to be same as my Q C. Are we all fine, right? Because why am I saying that? Because and uh, now uh opposite or oh, now equal angles uh it's going to uh it's going to be subtended by equal sides are you sure we are saying that uh equal side equal angles right so if the opposite sides are equal right and then therefore which means the corresponding angles are also going to be equal right so basically now that's what you are going to do in this particular question whenever we are required to prove right right so i'm hoping that all of this makes sense and you are in a position to answer these types of questions Thank you very much for listening.